When I was 10 years old, my family moved halfway across the country to Oak Ridge Camp in Oklahoma. We had never been to Oklahoma before. The backstory is my parents, grandparents, and their best friends sold their houses, used the money to buy the camp, started a nonprofit, and I've been at Oak Ridge ever since. I turned 30 this year. So for 20 years, I have either grown up as a child or as an adult worked at camp. Um, I love it. To say that it's a huge part of my family's life would probably be an understatement. Everyone has invested and served and just worked together to make the camp grow and get bigger and better. Every year it's grown and the impact, um, we've seen the attendance go up, we've got new properties, added activities, it's grown and grown and grown until spring 2020. Um, we got to March in 2020 and obviously our whole camp ministry is about people getting together and fellowshipping, worshiping, learning about God. It's all about being together. And so we got to this spring when um, in-person gatherings were, were being banned and being shut down and people were afraid to attend. And it was really scary. And I remember then um, in like March and April thinking, oh man, this is this is so scary, the virus is terrifying, it's crazy how it's affecting our ministry and our livelihood, but I'm so glad that this is happening in the spring and not in summer, because if it happened in summer when we have the most like productivity of serving guests and income and all that sort of thing, it would be really difficult. Well, you can probably guess what happened over the next few weeks. Uh, summer camps each week just got canceled and canceled and people were backing out and, um, it really looked like we weren't going to have anyone for a camp. And it was a big problem. It was really scary. And um, that's been a huge theme in my life this year is what are you going to do whenever there's a problem that you can't solve? And the verse that I wanna share is iconic and hopefully um, a guiding verse in your life. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your paths. That's Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. So what do we do when we're faced with a problem that we can't solve? We trust God. And um, this year, I really got to learn a lot more about that. I learned so much about how I thought um, that I was good at trusting God and obeying him and being flexible and all those things when really... Um, things just normally went the way that I thought that they should. And there's a huge difference between trusting God and trusting in your own understanding. Um, as the summer progressed, it was amazing. We were actually able to be open. We had about 900 campers. Nobody had a case of COVID. It was just an incredible, beautiful time. And there's so many ways that I could share that God has provided for us in so many different ways through other people. But what I really wanted to share with my church family today was um, to stop and consider who you trust in and who's really in control of your life. Because um, this summer and all of this year, really, I had to do that and had to realize that God is the person who's responsible. He is the person who starts good things. And he started our camp ministry 20 years ago. And he's really ultimately the one that's responsible for making it happen if he wants to see it continue. The Apostle Paul writes about how one person can plant seed, another person can water, but God is ultimately the one who gives the growth. And the people who plant the seeds, the people who water, they have a part to play, but it's really God who gives the growth and makes all of the difference. So this summer for me was a lot about learning that it doesn't depend on me. God's the person that's in control. And if he wants to see it continue, he's going to be the person that provides for it. Because I can look at each situation and every difficulty and challenge that we're facing and realize that I absolutely can't do this. I'm insufficient, but God's sufficient. And he loves me and he provides for his children. And I totally got to see that on full display. To come face to face with your insufficiency is really painful but it's really a mercy from God. We see that in the beginning of our relationship with God in salvation. We're not able to earn our way into his favor. 
but Jesus sacrificed himself so that we could be right with God. And that same concept is true every day. We're not sufficient, but God is. And he's the one who makes things grow. He's the one who's capable. I also um, knew as we were just thinking about the future and wondering what would happen that if camp ended and if 20 years was all that Oak Ridge was going to have, and if this was the end of a chapter, that God's still good and I know his character and he's not just the person who is in charge of my past and not just the person who's in charge of my far off future, but he's with me today guiding every single day. And if certain things in life are coming to an end, I can receive and see and trace his goodness through that even when it might be what I would not want. Um, it's incredible what happens when you get out of the pilot seat, get out of the driver's seat, and instead get into the front row seat and get to see fully on display all of God's goodness and what he's doing. Give up control and put it in the hands of God. It belongs there anyways. And the more that we try um, to feel like everything depends on us and we're gonna solve these problems and fix everything and make it all better, um, we're actually closing ourselves off to the incredible, amazing work that God can do. Because if I'm constantly stuck in that area that I can control and I can manage and asking for things that I can make happen on my own, it's really small. But when I get up to the end of myself and into the realm where the only way that things are going to happen is if God makes them happen and where other people are involved, the impact is so much greater and you get to be a part of a story that's so much bigger than yourselves. Let me read it again. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will make your path straight. Let me encourage you to trade worry for prayer. God designed us to pray, not to worry. And it's very meaningful and important that he tells us to stop worrying about tomorrow and just receive his goodness for today. Tomorrow is going to take care of itself. We can only handle today. So trade worry for prayer. Fear so often is all about what might happen and not really about what's happening right now. So take stock of the good things. Count up all the amazing things that are happening right now and stop thinking about what might happen. Trade control for trust. Go on an awesome faith journey with God because he can do so much more than you could ever do on your own. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge God, and he will direct your paths. Be encouraged. Take heart, friends. Trust in God.